So this is video number one for 3.1 parent functions. So in this handout, we're going to go through and we're just going to record all of the general information for each of our eight parent functions. So our first function family is linear. That should be the first one you ever learned about when you took um, algebra. And the general equation for linear is simply y equals x. Uh, the domain. You can put anything in for x you want. Positives, negatives, or zero. So it's all reals. Um, we can also simply look at the graph. And when we scan the graph from left to right, we see that it continues to um, happen. This arrow here tells us that it's continuing on the x-axis forever and ever in this direction, as well as in this direction. So it's all reals. The range, same thing. If you scan the graph um, from bottom to top, we see that it just keeps going because these arrows continue on. So the range is also all reals. Asymptotes happen where um, we're not allowed to have certain values. Well, when the domain and the range are all reals, that means there, can, there are no asymptotes. So we can say that there is none. Symmetry. Symmetry has to do with when you um, change the function, like if I turn or reflect the function, it should look like I didn't move it at all. So um, most of the time we have um, symmetry over the y-axis, reflection symmetry, or we have what we call rotation symmetry around the origin. Um, if you were to reflect this over the y-axis, this top part would be here, and this bottom part would be here. And though it would still be linear, it wouldn't look the exact same. We could tell that we moved it. So it is not reflection symmetry over the y, um, symmetric over the y-axis. However, if we were to turn this function, think of this kind of as like a knot, like a, um, like a handle. Not, I was going to say a door knob, a handle. And if you were to turn this around 180 degrees, bring this point over to here and this one to here, you wouldn't even be able to tell that I had rotated it. So it has rotation symmetry 180 degrees around the origin. And when you have that type of symmetry, we say that this function is odd. Odd functions are rotation symmetric 180 degrees around the origin. So we could also say odd. Uh, a maximum or a minimum. The function goes on and on forever in both directions, so there is no max or min. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right here at the origin, 0, 0. It crosses the x-axis at the same place. And the strategy for remembering this, I, I have a feeling most of you know linear at this point. So a memory strategy, if you want to put one in there, you can. All right, our next one is quadratics. Uh, quadratic is y equals x squared. Uh, the domain, if I scan the graph left and right, it keeps going. And you're allowed to put positives, negatives, or zeros in for x. So all reals. Now you'll notice for the range, this quadratic starts at zero and goes up, but it never goes below the x-axis. Therefore, the range is that y is greater than or equal to zero. Asymptotes. Um, there isn't an asymptote where we have um, a certain line where it can never cross. Uh, so this one also has no horizontal asymptotes, no vertical asymptotes. Um, you might be thinking, well, is the x-axis, which is y equals 0, an asymptote? It's not, because it touches that. It can actually be there. You can have 0 as a y value. Therefore, this is not an asymptote. An asymptote means it can't ever touch that line. Symmetry. Uh, this particular graph, you could reflect it over the y-axis. So we say it has reflection symmetry over the y-axis. And when 
you are reflection symmetric over the y-axis, that means that you are even. Okay. Uh, max or a min, there actually is a minimum value. At the base of that quadratic, the vertex is 0, 0. And in this instance, it is a minimum. So I'm just going to write a min. The y-intercept is 0, 0. And once again, the x-intercept is 0, 0. Um, for me, I remember the shape of a graph. I think of the word quadratic, and I would always draw the U to look like a quadratic. A cubic function is y equals x cubed. Domain, still all reals. The range is also all reals. Asymptotes, still no asymptotes. No lines that the um, graph is not allowed to cross. Symmetry, um, we're back to being rotation symmetric. You would, if you rotated this around the origin, it would look the exact same. So this is rotation um, symmetry, 180 degrees around the origin, which again is odd. Okay. And max or min, nope, it goes forever and ever up and forever and ever down, and it just keeps spreading out, so none. The y-intercept is 0, 0, and the x-intercept is 0, 0. I don't have... Um, a trick or a memory strategy for this one. If you have one, you can write it down right there. Uh, square root is y equals the square root of x. The domain, notice all my x values are only um, on the right of the um, coordinate plane. Therefore, y has to be, I mean, not, sorry, not y, x, the domain, x, is greater than or equal to zero. And then um, for the range, same thing, it's only up above, y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Still no asymptotes, none. Symmetry. If I reflect it, it would end up over here. If I rotate it, it would end up down here. And both of those change the graph, so this has no symmetry. Does it have a max or a min? It does have a minimum value, uh, 0, 0. It's going to be, um, well, but if we, it kind of depends, well, no, I guess 0, 0 would always be the minimum value, because um, if you had a 0 here, so this is 0, 0, and that is the min. The y-intercept is 0, 0. The x-intercept is 0, 0. And um, the way I remember it is that the square root graph kind of looks like the square root sign. I think of it like how this and that look kind of similar. If you just kind of put that there, it would look like a square root sign. So I think of the square root graph looking like the square root sign. All right, let's go to our next set of four graphs. Um, exponential growth. Our general equation um, is y equals 2 to the x. Right, the domain, um, you can put anything in for x. You'll see that it continues um, along the x-axis forever to the left as well as to the right. Therefore, um, the domain is all reals. Now, here for the range, notice it's going to get really, really close to zero, but it will never touch it because anytime we raise two to a power, we end up um, with something greater than uh, zero. It can't ever equal zero, but it can get really, really close um, the smaller and smaller it gets. So for the range, it's y is greater than zero. So you'll notice it can get really close, but never touch it. And along here, we actually have a horizontal asymptote 
Um, we denote that with a dotted line to show that it can never touch that line. And that is the line, the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals zero. And vertical asymptote, there is no vertical asymptote, so none for that. Um, as far as symmetry, if we rotate it or if we um, reflect it, we get a different looking graph, so there is no symmetry. There is no um, max or min. See the y-intercept. Let's look at where this crosses the y-axis. And you'll notice that it crosses the y-axis right here at the point uh, 0, 1, which makes sense. If you put a 0 in for x, anything to the 0 power is 1, and that's my y-intercept. Uh, my x-intercept, there is none, because remember, it's that's where my um, asymptote is, so it's never going to touch that. For exponential, I remember that my exponential models, I put my x up there as an exponent. People tend to get this one mixed up with quadratic. They think because quadratic has x squared, but the x has to be in the exponent. Notice that there's an x, I put it up here as an exponent, and that's where it is in the equation as well. For absolute value, we have y equals the absolute value of x. The domain, again, you'll notice it can go forever and ever in both directions on the x-axis. So all reals. Notice, um, though, on the range, it starts at 0, 0 and goes above. So y is greater than or equal to 0. There are no asymptotes. I don't see any place where it can't. Cross. Symmetry. This one is reflection symmetric over the y-axis. Which means we would say that this is an even function. Uh, it does have a minimum value, 0, 0. The y-intercept is 0, 0, and the x-intercept is also 0, 0. Um, my strategy for this is I write absolute, and the v in value I do is my v-shaped graph. My inverse variation graph is y equals 1 divided by x. The domain, when I look at this, the only thing, I, I see that it, gets, it keeps going to the right, it keeps going to the left, but it's never allowed to actually equal 0, and that's because you're not allowed to ever have 0 in the denominator. So for the domain, it's all reals except x cannot equal 0, right? Therefore, because x is not allowed to equal 0, there's no way for this fraction to ever be 0. Therefore, same thing, all reals except y will never be 0. You'll notice we never get a y value of 0. Asymptotes, well, we actually have an asymptote here because it can't ever equals 0, and x can never be 0. Therefore, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, and the vertical asymptote is x equals 0. Symmetry, if you rotated this around the origin, so this is rotation symmetric, 180 degrees around the origin, which means that this one is odd. Uh, max or min, there is none. Y-intercept and x-intercept, none, because we have asymptotes. And for a memory strategy, I'll tie it to the inverse square one when we get to that one, which is next. But that will have to be on our next video.